Yeah, good afternoon. My name's Darren Filkey. I'm the superintendent in charge of traffic services branch with SAPOL. Um, today, the South Australia Police are excited to launch a new road safety campaign in an attempt to reduce the number of lives lost and serious injuries that occur to motorcyclists on South Australian roads each year. Created to reduce speeding amongst motorcycle riders, the new campaign asks motorcyclists on thrill-seeking rides to back off before their thrills turn to grief. Specifically, the campaign is aimed at riders who speed for fun anywhere on South Australian roads, but with a particular focus on regional roads and the Adelaide Hills, where riders often lose control through speeding and hit fixed objects such as trees. Riders are aware of the dangers associated with riding, but sadly, there is not enough to stop some of them from making poor decisions and taking extreme risks, which often result in catastrophic outcomes. The campaign was thoroughly researched in one-on-one -on -one interviews with motorcyclists, which helped shape the messaging and takes the language and phrases used by the motorcyclists and overlays it onto confronting imagery. More than half the motorcycle crashes in the last five years have, uh, that resulted in a life lost or serious injury involved the motorcycle rider only. Better decision making and reducing speed on the part of the rider will have significant impact on reducing that percentage. So far in 2023, nine motorcyclists have lost their lives on South Australia roads. 71 motorcyclists have suffered serious injuries. Almost 20% of the total serious injuries on our roads. SAPOL look forward to this ad campaign and the positive impact it will have on reducing lives lost on our roads and serious injuries attributed to motorcyclists. Thank you. Uh, thanks everybody. Um, People love to ride their motorcycles and, and I don't think I've met anybody that is a motorcyclist that doesn't uh, thoroughly and absolutely love it. But the feedback that I've had as Minister meeting and talking to motorcyclists, uh, in particular the Motorcycle Riders Association, is a disconnect between those vast majority of motorcyclists that are doing the right thing and then the motorcyclists that the government is targeting with this new hard-hitting ad. Uh, motorcyclists that are riding dangerously and that are speeding or driving beyond their own ability are killing themselves on our roads. They're putting themselves at grave danger. They're causing catastrophic injuries that are often lifelong, but they're also bringing a huge amount of risk to other road users. Um, it might be a bit simplistic to say this, but when you're riding, riding a motorcycle, your uh, margin of error is just so much less than when it comes to being in a, in a vehicle, being in, in a car. Uh, you might have a helmet, you might have proper protective clothing, but the reality is you do not have uh, a tonne and a half of metal around you to protect you in case uh, of a collision or in case of a crash. Uh, this ad is hard hitting, it's, it's not ashamed of that. And we promised when we went into uh, creative and, 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 and production of this ad that we would be uh, shocking people into better decisions. We don't want people to stop riding their motorcycles. We want people to start riding them as they're meant to be, safely, enjoyably, and knowing that the decisions that they make this weekend will be the decision that makes sure they're out on the road, safe, uh, secure, next week and into the future as well. Um, the road toll, sorry, the number of um, motorcyclists is up from previous years. We've seen three trends uh, in 2023 compared to 2022 and also long term trends. The first is motorcyclists, the second is older drivers, and we've also seen an uptick in regional drivers losing their lives. Um, so much of our work that, that we do, working with SAOPOL, working with other agencies, is breaking down complacencies and misconceptions about road users. Um, there is a myth that if you're driving on a regional road and you lose your life, you might be from the city. That's not the truth. The truth is, is that country folk are dying on, their, on our roads close to home. And also the truth is that motorcyclists um, are losing their lives at a much higher rate this year compared to last year. And as we've also known, um, much of, uh, more than 50%, of the motorcyclists that have lost their lives on South Australian roads in 2023 
have been in single vehicle crashes. Um, that has to stop and people need to make better decisions. Um, we're sort of past the point now where we can sugarcoat what's, a, what's in front of us as a community. We're decades past that, if I'm honest. Um, you know, the year that I was born, in 1982, we had, uh, I think, 350-ish road deaths. That's come down dramatically. But we're still seeing people die on our roads that shouldn't die on our roads. And they're dying because they're making either a series of decisions or even a fractional second decision um, that's killing them. Is there a specific thing that you're targeting among motorcyclists? I mean, is it speed? Is that what the back off means? Yeah, yeah, look, I, there may be some operational matters that, 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 um, that police can, can talk more specifically on, but the, the research, the lessons learned just in the first few months of this year um, primarily are focused on speed. Uh, it's a very good question. I think that, that exact figure too, but it's within within budget. So we've we've brought forward some some funding uh, from the 21, 22, sorry within the twenty one twenty two financial year, and we've reprioritised that from a from an open pot and target it in a nimble way into this campaign, as well as the campaigns I spoke about regarding younger drivers uh, and also country folk. And this will run for how long? Uh, well, it's running across multiple platforms, so it'll it'll run for 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 some months. Um, most of the ads, if not all of the ads, um, that we create uh, from a road safety perspective uh, have a longer lifespan. Uh, you'd be familiar with the Selfish Prick campaign that is that is still running. That is now some years old, but nevertheless still very um, poignant and, and very shocking. So this one here I expect will be running for uh, months, years, because uh, the reality is that the risk facing motorcyclists doesn't start and stop at the end of a campaign. Just on other matters, yeah. um, we'll get back to Darren, I guess, on this, but um, a man was tasered last night in the city. Was that an appropriate course of action from police? Uh, I've no reason to, to believe or any advice that I've received um, that it wasn't. There are internal investigations that necessarily occur. These are very public matters. Uh, the footage speaks for itself, and um, these investigations sometimes do take a couple of days to to complete, I'll leave them to the internal investigations, but there's no advice that I've received that, that police did anything other than behave and respond in a very professional way. So do we need more tasers on the beat? We've got, this has nothing to do with the um, number of tasers on the beat. I think the, the reality is, is that um, our frontline police uh, deploy a, a range um, of operational tactics when it comes to protecting our, our community safety, and this is just one of them. And we saw that there'd been a comprehensive preliminary um, report into Crystal Brook. Can you comment on that and some of the findings? Yeah, look, um, I, I can. I, I do just want to be a little careful because there is a will be uh, a, a mandated coroner's inquiry um, that will occur as a death in custody. But uh, I trust this will come as uh, relief for the two um, officers involved, um, that the... Uh, Initial investigations have confirmed, I think, as um, all of us have have believed and supported these police in, in first instance, and that is that this was a, a tragic set of circumstances where police uh, responded in a manner that was entirely appropriate. Um, I hope this comes as some initial relief, but the, of course, the, the scars, both physically and mentally, will remain with these police police who were injured. Uh, by doing nothing more than going to work and protecting our community. And there's the people involved in the campaign. I mean, they're stunt actors, assuming. Um, the motorcyclists are stunt actors. Last thing we wanted to do was to film a motorcycle ad and then injure some motorcyclists, but the uh, therapist who was involved um, is a therapist. And this man, did he um, suffer those injuries in, in uh, this instance? Or? I'll have to I'll have to let you know about that one. He is no, I can I've been um, quickly advised that he has, he, he did suffer injuries um, as part of a, a road collision um, as a motorcyclist. Yeah. I suppose the focus on regional roads and the hills was mentioned. Why yeah. is that kind of focus of this campaign? Um, evidence, um, facts, and statistics that we um, that, that police use. Um, there are. A number of roads in various parts of South Australia, uh, including the Adelaide Hills, that are uh, highly policed. 
both from a covert and, and an overt perspective by our police to keep um, drivers safe. And uh, we are targeting the Adelaide Hills firmly because there has been statistically for a number of years uh, an increased number of uh, infringements for uh, matters like uh, speed. Uh, look, we know that, that ads do one thing. We also need to have a very strong penalty regime and that's why things like extreme speed offences which uh, the government brought into effect last year play a part. But road safety, um, safer roads, are many pieces in a puzzle and this is just one of them. Darren, can you sure. um, talk us through some of your learnings uh, ahead of this campaign? In terms of what you were out speaking with motorcyclists mm. and your investigations into recent crashes and fatalities? Yeah, sure. Look, this campaign was built on real life experiences from uh, motorcyclists. I think uh, we, we went and spoke to them directly. I think in excess of 30 motorcyclists were spoken to mm. in this, where they all gave us um, real life stories. Um, Thing with motorcycle riding is they love uh, the thrill of feeling free, they love the thrill of being outdoors, um, but many of these people understood the risks with motorcycle riding, but many of them also took some risks. Um, almost to a person, they said that they've either been involved in or avoided um, a serious injury or what could have been a life lost type crash. So um, this campaign is built around real life experiences. It's not made up. It's, um, it's driven by that. Some of the messaging in this ad campaign we've used and we've turned it around um, in, in the imagery and, imagery and the video. So people can, can look at uh, this ad campaign and connect with it because it's connected with real people. What do you say to motorcyclists who believe it's not them doing the wrong thing but it's motorists who aren't looking out for them, who aren't seeing them on the road? Uh, this seems to be very targeted at them not doing the right things. We've had the motor, motor. Sure. we've had nine motorcycle deaths this year. Um, all of them have been male. All of them have been preventable. Over fifty percent of those have involved extreme speed. None of them have involved other vehicles in terms of turning accidents or fail to give way accidents. They've <coughs> all been preventable. So it's yes, there is a percentage of crashes that involve motorcycles where another vehicle is involved. But there is a large percentage of motorcycle uh, crashes and collisions that uh, just involve the motorcycle rider themselves. Were all those deaths on regional and hills roads as well? It's, like so with this, this particular year, uh, it's about half and half. I think there's five metro and, and four regional. But when you take into account uh, the serious injury crashes, of which there's been 71 this year, um, there's 38 um, regionally and 36 uh, in metro. So it's it's half and half. So um, motorcyclists across the board uh, need to be aware of their riding behaviour. This, as the Minister has said, we're pitching this um, at speeding, at rural and regional roads, but all South Australian roads. Um, there are, whether we like it or not, some more risks taken in the hills because of the nature of the environment and, and the way motorcyclists like to express themselves on the road and that feeling of being free. So it's a real focus of ours in that hills area and regionally uh, that this ad campaign hits pretty hard at. Can you also tell us about the impact that these accidents have on the families of those um, who have this hobby? Uh, yeah, sure. It's Whether you're riding a motorcycle or you're, you're a life lost in a, in a vehicle, um, it has catastrophic um, flow-on effect to your family, uh, to your friends, to your, to your local communities. And it's, in some respects, it may be even felt even worse in rural communities because of how, how tight-knit they are. So uh, we speak regularly um, about how it impacts and how one life takes away a footy coach or how one life takes away your netball player or how one life takes away uh, a member of your, your community, um, community club uh, scenario. So it, it has massive impacts regionally and in the metropolitan area. So it's it's hard for, for people who haven't um, experienced a, a life lost or a serious injury in their family. It's, it's, it's almost unthinkable, it's um, unfathomable a lot of the time. So we just ask motorcycle riders in particular, people who get behind the wheel of a car, they take on and assume 
a high level of responsibility. The roads is not a place to test levels of responsibility. You drive to the conditions, you don't take risks, you don't speed, you don't engage in dangerous road behaviour, and we have a situation where we can bring the lives lost whole down really quickly. two videos this week of e-scooters riding on roads. They were wearing helmets, but this is an illegal practice. How difficult are you finding it policing these e-scooters? What kind of support would you like to see from the government in addressing this issue? Uh, you look, it's, it's fair to say we are working with government. We are aware of the issue. Um, clearly they're very prevalent in the city area. I'm not in a position today to talk about um, uh, detail about that, but suffice to say, um, we, we're aware of the issues that they cause uh, with irresponsible riding behaviour at the end of the day and we'll work with a number of stakeholders around that to make sure that pedestrians and other road users and the people who, who ride scooters themselves are safe. They're difficult to police though because they're, they're so quick and you can't get them on a car so well, unless you're on yeah. a motorbike yourself. They, they, can, they can be, yeah. That does cause some problems around enforcement around scooters, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.